Art block. The creative disease that plagues us all at one point. It's curable, but the only way is to endure it and maybe suffer a little bit. I know I did. The block was so real that I had a hard time even planning this video, but you're watching it right now, which means somehow I made it through. Now, what happened? The dreaded and highly anticipated Inktober, or Arttober, Peachtober, whichever one you do. My goal for the month was to finish a whole challenge. I had done the 100 day drawing challenge before, so 31 days didn't sound too difficult. I'm showing you the days I was able to complete, which in total was 14 days out of 31. Not bad, but not quite there. I know for a fact that creating finished pieces every day was taking up a lot of energy, which ultimately led to burnout, then ultimately led me to art block. So of course I wondered, what am I doing wrong here? Why am I still having a hard time creating artwork even if I'm following prompts? And then I had an epiphany. Think of it this way, this is you. Let's say you work out in the gym a lot, every day, two hours. You hit legs every single time, you're exercising the same muscle groups, and you never take a break. Yeah, you're getting juicy, but you'll eventually get tired working on the same thing. So what can you do? Work on something else, like cardio, your arms, or simply take a rest day. It's the same thing with creating artwork. There's different parts of the process you can work on aside from just the creating portion. I was able to split the creative process up into four steps. Immerse, curate, create, and reflect. This sounded like the best idea, so I took a couple weeks to test these out, and I'm going to bring you with me. The first phase of the creative process can sometimes take the longest. The quote I included at the start of the video really speaks to this. In order to create art, we must put ourselves into the state that causes art to be made. Inspiration can come from anywhere, but one of my favorite places to go is the art gallery. To be immersed in an experience or environment that is different from your day-to-day -day is the perfect way to get some new ideas. I found a couple prints I liked in the gift shop. One is called Reading by Berth Morisot, and this one is called The Dessert or After Dinner by Pierre Bonnard. Some of the best artwork comes from experiencing our daily lives, so don't forget to live. Still feeling a little bit sick today. I have to go pick up some more tea for my throat. It's not COVID, I took a test. But yeah, I'm gonna go drop off some orders today. Take a little walk. I think that's a good idea because I've been quite the hermit, so. At this point, I had some ideas that I wanted to explore, so I stopped by my local bookstore. I read quite a bit and love listening to audiobooks and science podcasts while I paint. Topics surrounding nature, the spiritual realm, and human behavior are very intriguing to me.
After poking around, I found this beautiful bird photography book. You can always search up reference materials online or scroll Pinterest, but I like having tangible references for core subjects I enjoy. The curation phase is all about narrowing down your ideas and creating a general guide to follow. By general guide, this can look like a sketch draft, a mood board, or a collection of references. You're preparing the pieces to put together, but the way the image forms is still up to you. At this stage, I had already gathered some image references from my books, so I was going to use these to do a couple of studies of swans and irises, since this would be my first time having swans in a painting. I typically like to work with sketches first so that I can get a better idea of the composition of the painting and to clarify some of the details so that I make less errors when I do the final piece. I finally got to use this gigantic watercolor pad that I got at the thrift store. It was $3, which I think is insane because, I mean, look at the size of this thing. I wasn't in the mood to paint something this huge though, so I decided to cut the paper in half. I did it Neanderthal style, which is basically folding it repeatedly and then ripping it apart. If you have a gigantic paper cutter or scissors, you can use those too, but I wanted to do it this way so I can get the raw edge. Now the fun part, creating. You've built up all the way to this point. It's easy to get carried away in this phase. This will either take you the longest or the least time. The key is to release expectations and see where your ideas take you.
I was looking at myself in the viewfinder and I noticed that I literally started breaking out and my mascara was smudged. <laughs> That's how you know I was really going through it, but the painting turned out really nice, which I was very pleased with. Man, this day I kind of forgot about myself for a bit. I couldn't speak here because some people were sleeping and I didn't want to wake them up, but I was really happy with how the piece turned out. I did get a little bit lost in the sauce, but I was really happy that it was complete. Finally, reflecting. This is easily the most important part of the process because rest is necessary for growth. Look at what you created and think of three things you like about it, how it makes you feel, and what you would do differently next time. The way that I used to work was that whenever I felt like creating something, that was the only time I would make something. So I could go months without creating anything because I just simply didn't feel like it. I think that splitting this into immerse, curate, create, and reflect, that took away the extra anxiety of thinking of all the other tasks that I had to do just before creating a piece. Most of the time I get art block because there are so many ideas that I can't choose, so that I do none of them. I know that creatives tend to just go with whatever or wherever the mind wants to take them, but I think that because artists usually think that way, we would benefit from a bit of structure from time to time. Sometimes I get quite surprised by how my artwork turns out because most of the time I just do a sketch. I don't really plan the extra brush strokes or the little scratchies, but I think that is what I enjoy most about creating is that no matter how much you plan something, it's always going to turn out the way it wants to turn out. And even if it's not exactly the way you envisioned it, sometimes it turns out better. Anyways, my shop is going to be closed from mid-December till the new year, then I'm going to do another update, but for sure, she will be there as a print and maybe something else. I don't know. Don't forget to rest. Artwork typically comes from the soul, so you need to remember to feed the soul since you can't pour from an empty cup. Thanks for being here with me. Until next time, I'll see you soon.